Welcome to Job Searching with Confidence. I am Elizabeth Simpson. This is a quick look at how to maintain confidence as you embark on your new job search. This presentation is for anybody. However, I did originally design this presentation to support fellow military spouses and partners. The activities you find here will support anyone in building confidence as you embark on your, on your job search. Often, a dent in confidence is due to feeling uncertainty, either in the situation you're facing or in the story we tell ourselves. I'll briefly run through a new perspective you can embrace as you move forward with your job search. Focusing on what is important to you, your unique identity, reducing negative bias, reducing negative automatic thoughts, and then a bit of a reframe at the end. Firstly, as you embark on, your, on applying for a new job, consider your why. Why this job? Why this organisation? Why now? Why this and not that? Why me? Have the answers to these questions will help focus your attention on your skills and your strengths, your passions and your circumstances. And then ask, why am I applying for this, using, doing this CV or application? At this point, you'll find it useful to remind yourself that writing an application is to present your true and real self to a potential employer. It is so that they can take the smallest amount of effort to see you fitting into that role. Keeping this in mind will help you avoid imposter syndrome and those negative automatic thoughts. For example, if you chose to demonstrate your passion for, an act- for activities you really are not that interested in, you will likely walk away wondering how you could have done things differently. If you lead with your authentic passions and skills, you'll be less likely to ruminate with negative thoughts and what ifs. Another reason to complete a job application is to open yourself to new experiences. Not just when you get the job, but by applying for it, you can learn something, discover discover something, or make a new connection. Maybe your CV stays on file and new opportunities come your way at another time. New experiences are possible, but not applying means you will never know what would have come from it. Knowing your why will also help weed out those jobs, job applications. You do not do not actually interest you and jobs that wouldn't engage you or enrich your life. This application is not an opportunity to mould yourself with someone else's idea of perfect. It's not a chance to do someone else's job that may look good and it's not to meet someone else's expectations on you. When we act out of a sense of what we think we should do, we can fall into some incorrect thinking traps such as mimetic wanting, copying someone else's idea of what they want without really looking at if we want it. Perfectionism, taking steps to show others and ourselves how perfect we are. Hedonic expectation. We think we'll be happier because of a particular action. And then there's external pressures and external motivation. The brilliance with starting over with a job search is that we have autonomy in this. We get to choose which direction to go in. Knowing your why will also help weed out those job applications that do not actually interest you. Finding your why helps to promote good self-image and will bolster your your confidence. Before you start your job search, or as you wait for your full response from your application or even the result of an interview, you could undertake this self-reflection activity. Looking at what is in your influence and what is not will help you identify actions you can take to better improve your chance of success. Um, Just what to let go of. This will help you see what is true about the situation and avoid negative bias, thinking the worst. What you discover will be unique to you. You may wish to pause here and make a note of your personal reflections. These are some ideas I've come up with. A well-written CV or application 
you've prepared for the interview, you've got some advice maybe on how to make your CV as well presented as possible. You've kept up your CPD or you found courses to take. You took steps to be visible, such as asking great questions before the interview. You've tackled those limiting beliefs and you've got a clear sense of identity, who you are as you approach this new role. What is not in your influence are unknowable criteria. For example, the company may have had a series of inexperienced people come through and they haven't mentioned in the job advert, actually they're looking for five years of experience. You did not know this. This this is unknowable and outside of your influence. So too is who makes a decision, how they make the decision, what influences them on the day. I've mentioned the armed forces community. An employer may know how amazing the people are within this community and the qualities they possess. They may also hold unconscious biases. They may be making decisions based on generalizations and probably false false assumptions about people within this community. And then there's the Equality Act. This can be limiting. So companies may have a policy in place that all jobs are advertised, even when they have a suitable candidate internally that could and possibly will fill that post. This is unknowable. This is outside your your control and your influence. To avoid indirect discrimination, an organisation may be aware that their current workforce is comprised of a similar demographic. And if they do not advertise externally, this could be classed as being indirectly discriminatory against any protected group that is underrepresented in the workplace, such as age, sex and race. Knowing these factors are beyond your influence and knowing you have influenced everything else you can can support you no matter what the decision is about your application. Hopefully, at this point, you have advocated your qualities, experience and skills and you're offered the interview, or even better, the job. However, there may be a missed opportunity here. Not for you, for them. You've checked your why, you've influenced everything in your influence, and you know you were great for the job. But unfortunately, you're unsuccessful. This hurts. You've put yourself out there. But when you're ready, take a look at the feedback. I love this perspective from Tara Moore in her book, Playing Big, that feedback doesn't tell you about you, it tells you about the people giving the feedback. If you're giving unwanted feedback, you don't have to agree with it. Consider what the feedback says about them. Maybe it's that they're inflexible, that they don't value the input of a working mother. But what does that say about their culture? And do you really want to work in that culture? Next, if the feedback is useful, consider, for example, emphasising skills on your CV or taking a short course. If you think that the advice, you trust the advice giver and you think that the advice was useful, what will you do differently? And how can you update your circle of influence? What have you learnt about the process? What are your patterns that have been emerging? What are you going to be doing differently to counter that? Either way, turning turning this feedback into good data and to use it to move forward as you return to your why and influence what you can influence. Just about all of my coaching clients have explored their work or their career with me. From studying to get to that dream job, to how they approach their work-life balance, to barriers they face at work, to how to transition to a different career. Many feelings of uncertainty and anxiety associated with getting work and making it work for you is not uncommon. Here I have a free PDF workbook that may support you if you want to find your unique purpose. Simply follow the link or use a QR code. Alternatively, Check out my socials on my website to stay informed about tips, evidence-based information, and more coaching resources. 
I wish you all the best.